In this video, we are going to discuss about RNN, that is Recurrent Neural Network and its functionality. Now, RNN is actually also we can say a class of deep neural networks or artificial neural networks. RNN has a wide range of applications such as chatbots, price prediction, and it has a major role in text mining video processing speech recognition and also in music compositions and many more there rnn has a wide range of application now a question might arise in your mind that why do we need rnn and how it is different from the other neural networks which we studied that is ann and cnn that what is the certain need of it so we just think about it when we watch a movie or read a book we do not learn every word from the scratch whatever we have learned or studied in our life till now we understand things on the basis of it we used to assume things on the basis of it just like that words which i am saying you right now we already know some of those words such as artificial neural network cnn the video processing speech recognition we know these particular words basically when we learn new words we store them in our memory now what happens in the networks such as ann and cnn which are also known as feed forward neural network we train our model with a particular data and predict the same type of data using that model that's what we have done till now we have feed a particular data to the model and predict the same type of data using that model that's what happened in the feed forward neural network that is ann and cnn but what we do is with the feed forward neural network the output has no relation with the previous input or we can see the previous output has no relation with the new output that is there we can say this is the yt which is the output there but if another layer has been connected then it has no relation with this particular layer so we can say in the feed forward neural network no relation of output with previous generated output there is no relation with it and there lies only the limitation of the speed forward network or we can say the artificial neural network and the convolution neural network that independence the first drawback which is there is independence now what happens in independence is different training examples are independent of each other because there is no dependency in the previous related output of the new output that is generated data points ann cannot deal with sequential data now one term i use here is sequential data keep this in mind we will discuss it just in a few seconds only that what is sequential data and another drawback which is there or we can say the limitation of the feed forward neural network is the fixed length data So this fixed length data is nothing but normal feed forward neural network except data of the same type as it was given at the time of training such so that if we have trained our model with certain uh, images of we can say pet animals we can say cat dog and bird and something and if we want to predict for a fruit would it give a correct output will it predict correctly no it won't so fixed length of data is there data type which you are feeding that same type you have to use while training and testing also and for validation also that is there so these are the few limitations which are there of the feed forward neural network now one term i used while i was discussing about the data points that ann cannot deal with sequential data now what is this sequential data actually sequential data is a kind of data where the order matters as you said so when we assume that time series is a kind of sequential data because the order matters because what have been previously written that actually matters what is going to be written next for example we write a particular sentence like it is a warm day so that means somewhat the pa previous parts of sentence are quite related to the next part which is going to be there in sentences also we know that order is actually very important if the words are changed in a sentence then they are going to be making no meaning so that is there so this type is no data is known as a sequential data where the order matters and when this order matter then you can definitely give a picture that it must have a relation with the previous output which is not present in the feed forward neural network that's why rnn comes into the picture 
Now, where this RNN is mostly used, you can think about Google Autocomplete is there. Or you can say stock price prediction. It is done on some previous sort of data which is there. In Google also, when you write to search something, then firstly you write the first word. Let's say if you write like this, Python. Then, you know, several autocomplete comes like that. The Python tutorial, Python download, Python programming, language. Such type of predictions which are there with the word you entered. And that is particularly an example of RNN. So with that clear picture, you can just think about it and you can relate it that RNN must have a relation with the previous output generated. Then only it can generate the sequential data or it can operate on the sequential data that is there. Next, we are going to discuss about the working of RNN. Now, RNN is nothing but it is actually a very simple neural network, we can say, a normal network. Here we just have an extra weight, that is the recurrent weight, WR, which is recurrent weight. So this is just an extra weight which is there and due to this weight, it actually predicts the sequential data which is there. With the help of this recurrent weight only, we are able to store the previous input in the internal memory of the neurons. Like here you can see, this is x0 and input is there along with its respective weight which is there. It is passed through an inner layer, we can see the hidden layer. And an output is being generated with the respective weight from the hidden layer moves on. Now this wr is actually the recurrent weight. Here you can see this wr. So this width, it moves on as to the hidden layer also along with the weight of the new input which is there. Similarly, the recurrent rate which is generated from here, it also moves on with the weight of the next input which is there. So we can actually say that a recurrent neural network can be thought as multiple copies of same network passing a message to the successor with the new neuron, we can say the new next neuron which is there. So what happens in a simple neural network, we will get y0 output on x0. Okay. Similarly, y1 output on x1 and x2 is the input, then y2 is the output which is there. But all the output, that is y0, y1, etc. are independent to each other. But here you can see that in RNN equation, what happens is there is a recurrent weight that has been passed to generate the output. That means it actually passes a message to the successor neurons which is there. How can an RNN equation will be written? It will be written like this. Like this here you can see that. The weight along with the input, which is here you can see, along with the addition of recurrent weight which is there, plus BH that is the bias. So Y, WI and WI we can see the weights which are there, WR is the recurrent weight which is there and HE similarly we actually include all the inputs which are there, this is the reduced raw matter. Now no need to go in the mathematical equation, you just have to know the concept which is there, that while processing a particular layer or we can say a neuron which is there, a recurrent weight is generated that also moves along with the weight of the next input to the next hidden layer which is there in a particular network and that is the actual role of RNN, that's how it does the prediction, we can say that's how it operates on the sequential data because it has the, previously you can see a recurrent weight has been there as a successor for the next input of the neuron layer. Now there are so, several problems also with RNN, we are going to discuss about what are those problems. Before proceeding with what are the problems, I would like to discuss with you that RNN actually works or you can say uses back propagation algorithm for training purposes. Now output at a time t can be we can say is basically a timestamp, that any output at a particular time t which is generated on an input xt is basically called as a timestamp. So what happens is, in back propagation is basically used to reduce the total error with updating the changing weights in going back of the, we can say in the backward propagation of neural network. We have discussed about back propagation elaborately in our previous video, you can refer to that. But here I am just giving you a brief about it. So back propagation is basically used to reduce the total error which is there. Now when actually we go back to change and update the weights which are there, every step reduces the error, that is true. But we have to do this for a very every timestamp which is there and it is actually very long and a slow process. So these are the two main issues which are in during the back propagation which is the first problem is vanishing gradient. And the second problem which arises is exploding gradient. So what happens is, as we know that back propagation is used to reduce the error by updating the weights. So according to the formula, change in weight is equals to the partial derivation 
of the change in error with respect to the weights multiplied with the learning rate which we studied that eta is the learning rate which is there so now here we have to define an error now error formula we know that what is it actual output that is generated let's say we are marking it as oa minus the model predicted output so that whole square is actually checked as an error this is the formula of error we use now if the partial derivation of error with respect to weight is less than 1 then what happens is learning rate is not that important in the changing factor also that means we can say that weight updated which is there is equals to weight original minus the learning rate which is there e total to the weight which is expected to there that means delta w here is actually the weight original minus the weight updated so if we are going in backward direction again and again then what happens is in every step will decrease delta w will automatically decrease and ultimately it will vanish so this type of issues where weight changes are negligible so that is actually here in the vanishing gradient which is there that means where de by dw we can say is very very less than one it comes to then these type of issues occur and that is known as vanishing gradient that the gradient automatically vanishes while I update and going in backward progression automatically next we are going to discuss about what is exploding gradient it is exact opposite of the previous issue which we have discussed that is a vanishing gradient now um, what happens is de by dw which is there is actually very very greater than 1 so in this type of issue the partial derivation of the error with respect to the weight is high and this causes for a drastic weight change which is there so these are the two issues which are there the problem is RNN because it operates on backwards propagation so as it operate on the back propagation these two problems arises during the back propagation the vanishing gradient and the exploding gradient which is there now there are some methods to overcome these issues also and you know the training in RNN is hard and the gradient issue solution also do not hold up for long sequences. So we need a proper solution for that and the major solution of that is LSTM which we will be discussing in our upcoming video but by the end of this video I would like to sum up that we discussed about what is RNN, why do we need RNN when we already have the feed forward neural network because what are the limitations there, the independence, data point, fixed length data and also the ANN cannot operate on the sequential data. For all that we need RNN which is also a class of deep neural networks. We discussed about the working of RNN, what is the WR that we can say the recurrent weight which is there which also adds as an input weight along with the weight of the respective new input to a layer. Next we discussed about the equation also and the problems with RNN that is the vanishing gradient and the exploding gradient. Next we are going to discuss the solution for this problem that is LSTM.